This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University. And today I want to talk about what I'm calling Satoshi's secret weapon. And this video is made in response to a bunch of comments that look like this. These were comments to yesterday's video about how whether Bitcoin is controlled by two mining pools. And I thought Joe Blow 7992 had a good comment that sort of summed up this point of view. And it's a point of view that I disagree with, as you will see. So Joe Blow said, this is a big problem with Bitcoin. The original idea was one CPU, one vote. People could build a mining rig and mine from home, but now it has been taken over by large players with specialized ASICs, which we're going to talk about in a moment. All the Bitcoin maxis never address this problem, and all they tell you is to buy Bitcoin. I love the idea of being able to earn passive income by plugging in a few miners straight from my house, but now with ASICs costing thousands of dollars each and burning thousands of watts each. It's just out of reach for the average person. Now, I'm sympathetic to this point of view, but I would point out to Joe Blow that the main point of Bitcoin mining is to secure the protocol. It's not necessarily to make it easy for people at home to earn yield, though it is still possible if you join a mining pool like we talked about yesterday. So let's rewind a little bit and get behind what this means and see if we can get an idea of Satoshi's original intentions as well here. So what Bitcoin miners do, they really should be called hashers because all they do is perform a SHA-256 hash. So you have input, you have some data that you put in, and then you calculate the hash. And you try to find a hash that has a certain number of leading zeros. In other words, that's below a certain difficulty target. And what you do is you keep changing what's called the nonce. You keep changing this number. You keep hashing until you get a number of leading zeros. So in Satoshi's day, you could still do this on CPUs. And what has happened is there's been a hashing arms race where you used to be able to mine Bitcoin on CPUs. Then you could only mine it on GPUs. And now you can only mine Bitcoin using highly specialized pieces of hardware called ASICs, which stands for Application Specific Integrated Circuit. These are machines that can do only one thing, which is to do the SHA-256 hash. And they do it, I believe it's quadrillions or quintillion times per second now. That is the hash rate of the Bitcoin network. So there's been this natural progression from CPUs through GPUs to ASICs. And you'll hear a lot of people who say they're against ASICs. They, they like ASIC resistant currencies like Monero, for example, or they like the fact that you can still mine their currencies using, using GPUs. And so this is the other piece that I wanted to address today. This is what an ASIC looks like. Again, it's a highly specialized machine. They can only do SHA-256 hashes. So what I really want to do in this video is put to rest the misconception that Satoshi was against GPU mining. You can see this in response to the video I made about well, whether Ethereum will break like Terra Luna and Cogitex said Satoshi was against graphic GPU, which later became a specialized ASIC justif justification to grow the network and sp spread adoption equally. Quote, it's nice how anyone with just a CPU can compete fairly equally right now, Nakamoto said. So I think uh, when I hear this, when I hear things like Satoshi never wanted things to get like this, he wanted everyone to be able to mine Bitcoin. I don't think that's exactly true if you take a look at the history. In the early days, as everyone knows, Bitcoin was highly centralized. It started off as just a program on Satoshi's computer, and Satoshi was the first Bitcoin miner. He did not do a pre-mine, but he did mine. He burned electricity. And after Satoshi, uh, was the only guy. Then on the network, you had Satoshi and Hal Finney. So the, it was highly centralized and has gradually become more and more decentralized. And it's important to recognize that not only was it centralized, but it was highly fragile for this reason. Bitcoin was like a small young plant in 2009, 2010, even 2011, a small plant that needed to be protected from harsh sunlight and predators and caterpillars, etc. And so early Bitcoin mining really was sort of coordinated to a large extent by Satoshi, and it was a bit of a gentleman's agreement, as we will see. And I think that Satoshi, as I'm gonna demonstrate, also knew that this arms race was coming in hashing. He just didn't want it to come before Bitcoin was ready for it. So here's a post on the Bitcoin Talk Forum from December 12th of 2009. And again, the first block, the Genesis block, was mined on uh, January 3rd of 2009. So this is not even a year later. And Satoshi says in this post, we should have a gentleman's agreement to postpone the GPU arms race as long as we can for the good 
of the network. It's much easier to get new users up to speed if they don't have to worry about GPU drivers and compatibility. It's nice how anyone with just a, a CPU can compete fairly equally right now. And this is the source of that quote that Monero people and Bcash people and lots of people are always talking about that Satoshi was somehow against GPUs. But as we can see here, he wanted to postpone the hashing arms race. He was aware that it was going to happen. This is a very interesting article that uh, from last year that I missed. And uh, I think this contains some a very interesting private elo email. So Laszlo, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, but this is the guy who spent 10,000 Bitcoin and did the first real world Bitcoin transaction. It's come out that he did some emails back and forth with Satoshi and it came out that Satoshi actually had invented some program, uh, some programming to mine Bitcoin using a GPU. So according to Laszlo, one of the first emails he received from Satoshi was a response to the post where Laszlo described his GPU miner and he said Satoshi was not too happy about it. And here's the quote from Satoshi, at least according to Laszlo, hey, can you go slow with this? Look, I don't care if people hoard the Bitcoin, I don't care if the wealth is concentrated, but right now the big attraction is that anybody can download Bitcoin and start mining with their laptop. So he did not want, Satoshi did not want the hash rate of the Bitcoin network to go up too quickly at the beginning. And again, this wasn't a question about someone with a high hash rate machine being able to take all the Bitcoin and concentrate wealth. Satoshi was much more worried about just scaling up the security gradually. And Laszlo says the same thing that I, that I believe, that he says he thinks that Satoshi knew very well that Bitcoin mining would eventually turn into an industry, but he wanted to delay it so as not to hamper adoption. And so this is, these are two examples of Satoshi being ready for GPUs. So the, the other part of this article I want to draw your attention to is that Satoshi, at least according to Laszlo, had created some code that allowed him to do uh, mining with GPUs that allowed Satoshi to do mining with GPUs and Satoshi was ready to use GPUs and this program to defend the Bitcoin network if there was a 51% attack done by CPU. So again, this is a point at which Satoshi has not let go completely. He is, he is protecting the nascent network and he wants to be able to protect it from 51% attack. So he was definitely not against providing security to the network. Satoshi was obviously a smart guy. He was not against powerful specialized hardware. And this makes sense. So in a real world, world example, if you have all of your money in a metal safe, do you want that safe to be guarded by three guys with knives or three guys with machine guns? And I would say, and this is the, one of the big quotes of this video, there is nothing virtuous or, or commendable about bringing a knife to a gunfight. This is what I would say to the Monero community. There's nothing virtuous or commendable about bringing a knife to a gunfight. If you've seen the movie with Tom Cruise, The Last Samurai, you had the sort of more modern army that was fighting the samurais, the modern Japanese army. They were all using uh, rifles like this. And then you had the samurais, all of whom got completely slaughtered. They had really cool costumes. They had really cool swords but they could not defend their land uh, against machine guns. And so when I, when I hear Monero, Monero people talking about ASIC resistance, I always think of them as being these 21st century samurais. We don't approve of ASICs. We don't approve of guns. We want to keep uh, changing our hashing algorithm to make it very hard for people to build ASICs to use on Monero. And I think this is very noble. This is very idealistic but it is very stupid as well, and they're not gonna make it as a result, NGMI. If Monero ever actually became as valuable as Bitcoin and as highly used as Bitcoin, companies would develop specialized software, I mean, I'm sorry, specialized hardware for it. You could call it ASICs, you could call it some other kind of specialized hardware, but this would happen. There's no way to stop people from building highly specialized hardware to mine your crypto. All you can do is make it economically undesirable. But if your coin appreciates enough, it will reach a point at which companies, or at least individuals and maybe private groups, wealthy private groups will start to develop ASICs to mine your crypto. You can keep changing the hashing algorithm, but if it makes economic sense, large companies will develop ASICs to mine it. This transition will create massive centralization and it will benefit large incumbents with billions of dollars to spend on R&D. And so if, for example, Bitcoin were to change its hashing algorithm, this would hurt 
the little guy. This would not hurt the large companies that have billions of dollars in uh, research and development budgets to build more specialized machine machines. And the only reason Monero, people aren't building ASICs for Monero, again, we don't know if they are or not, but it looks like they're not, is because it's not economically uh, profitable. It doesn't, make, it doesn't make sense. So when you change the hashing algorithm, it benefits the large incumbents, it benefits the large companies that have the research budget to develop ASICs. And this creates, as I said, massive centralization, benefits large incumbents with billions of dollars to spend on R&D. Now, Bitcoin has fortunately passed this ASIC event horizon. I'm using the black hole metaphor here. Bitcoin ASICs are no longer made by a single company like Bitmain as they were in 2016, 2017. ASICs are rapidly becoming commodified. And fortunately for Bitcoin, there's no other crypto asset that has made this transition. A lot of, a lot of other cryptos like Ethereum was too scared to keep going with proof of work. They were always behind uh, Bitcoin and so they went to proof of stake, really shot themselves in the foot. And Monero is really f trying to uh, fight and, de and die on this hill of ASIC resistance. It makes no sense what s whatsoever. People who favor ASIC resistance are not only like the extinct samurais, they're also, they always remind me like the, the Berkeley, California City Council. I used to live in Berkeley at one point when I was going to graduate school there. And you can see these signs around that uh, the ultimate virtue signaling from a place like Berkeley, calling it a nuclear free zone. And uh, I'm sure they still used electricity from Diablo Canyon that was generated by electric power, uh, generated by nuclear power. But the, the joke about this is that somehow, uh, this was even during back during the Cold War, somehow the Russians would not bomb Berkeley because it was a nuclear free zone. So this is a lot like the idealistic Monerans and other people who push for ASIC resistance and people like Joe Blow who are complaining that not everyone can mine from home. Not everyone is meant to mine. What provides uh, the and what provides and enforces the consensus rules of Bitcoin are the full nodes, which anyone can run. Very inexpensive. You can download it just on your laptop and run Bitcoin Core. Bitcoin mining is a little bit more difficult. There's no reason that everyone needs to do it. In the same way that there's no reason that everyone needs to learn how to use a machine gun and stand in front of a, 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 a safe full of cash. Bitcoin mining is becoming more and more difficult. And this is a good thing, at least to the extent that ASICs have become commodified and there's no single point of failure there anymore. So Bitcoin has made, has passed the ASIC event horizon. No other crypto has done this. And I think this bodes very, very well for Bitcoin's future security. And I think this is something that Satoshi definitely would have approved of as we saw by his plans to ramp things up using using GPUs to defend the network. I don't think he would have shrunk back from using ASICs to defend the network. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like and subscribe buttons. Hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.